So hello everybody, my name is Ace Curtis. I am from San Diego, California. I am a personal growth and self-improvement certified life coach. What I do is help people achieve their next level of good. And one of the things I'm known for is being the guru that will take you from good to great. So first, a little bit about me. Uh, I am one of four children. My mother was a single mom teacher. She was one of six. My grandmother was one of 19. So I have this huge, 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 huge family. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of cousins across the U.S., a lot of educators in my family. So coaching and teaching happens to be in my blood. So what I want to do with all of you here today is we're going to talk about four different things. The first two things we're going to talk about is focus and mindset. This is so you have an idea of the types of tools that I use in my coaching. The purpose of this is for people to be empowered. I want to make sure that there are tactical pieces that you have to empower you for the next pieces, which is going from good to great. And something I learned from Natasha Graziano, if you guys don't know who she is, she's like a female Tony Robbins, big, powerful energy, wonderful, wonderful speaker and motivator. And she talks about being it before you become it. So as we talk, as we start with focus, I break tools down into acronyms. Focus stands for the flow of optimal confidence and concentration to achieve your ultimate success. Now, I want you to think about the end in mind as far as what ultimate success is, because that is defined by you. How do you define success and what does that mean? So when we think about the flow of that, flow is really about not being scrambled and all over the place, but directing your thoughts and directing your energy. This way you're gonna line up tasks, activities, actions, and you're gonna flow them in one direction. Now we think about the word optimal. When something is optimal, it's at its highest or best state. So you think about optimal engagement or the optimal time to do something. That means it's the best time to do it. So when we think about our concentration, when we use the word concentration, sometimes we hear the term laser focus. That's because concentration is often linear. You're going to take something, again, we're flowing our thoughts, we're becoming more efficient, more effective with how we think, and we're gonna flow it in one direction. Now, when we think about optimal confidence, Confidence isn't just about skills. We're often confidence and some have confidence in something that we're very skilled in, right? We've got our strengths, we know they all we lean into. But confidence is also about belief. So when you believe in something, you have greater confidence in it, whether you're familiar with it or not, whether you know it or not. And so that last piece of that ultimate success, we're gonna take all that all those pieces and bring them together when we put together your coaching program. How are we flowing the tasks? activities, actions that you need? How are we creating the optimal level of concentration that you need? Clearing out your space, making sure you have the right ability to focus. How are we building your confidence? You have the belief in yourself to achieve that level of success. And we take the time to define that for you. What does that mean to you, whether that's personal, whether that's career, whether that's something you're trying to achieve that's intangible. We define that and bring it together. Now the next thing I want to discuss with you is mindset. A lot of us have good mindsets, but when I talk to people, a lot of times they say, what does mindset actually mean? Or how do I change it or even get one? So I define mindset as the mentality to take the initiative towards a new determination that shifts your execution today. So mentality is about your attitude. You've all heard the term, if you change your attitude, you can change your life. And that's because when you change the way you see something, you're also able to change your mentality or attitude behind it, and you're able to change how you interact with it. So your attitude is very, very important when it comes to your mindset. When we talk about initiative, it's really important, again, to take the right actions. You've got to pride yourself. Set yourself up to take initiative, because we can't be passive with what we want. One thing I loathe the people saying is when they say, oh, if it happens, it happens. If it's meant to be, it'll pee. What's meant to be will be for me. It'll just fall at my feet. That would be really, really nice because I'd buy a lot of ticket, hold my hands out, and the millions and millions of dollars would have fallen into them a long time ago. But we have to take initiative towards what we want. Now think about the word new. We had Jeremy up here earlier, and he was talking about new words, new thoughts. And that's so important. You have to frame things in a new and different way because the same way that you've been doing it has A, gotten you to where you are, but B, will it get you where you want to be? So you need new thoughts. You need a new frame of mind. You need a new mindset, a new mentality. Take a new initiative. Now when you do that, that leads us into the D, which is, again, that determination. Determination aligns with discipline, right? So when we think about something as simple as exercising and working out, we have a determination behind that. We set a goal. We say, hey, I want to lose this much or I want to get this kind of muscle. And then we create disciplines around that. I'm gonna to go to the gym five days a week. And on the first 
day I'm going to do weights. On the second day I'm going to do cardio. On the third day I'm going to do core. On the fourth day I'm going to rest. On the fifth day I'm going to do yoga. So determination is not just about being determined or that state of wanting and desire, and that's a key part of it, but the second half of it is discipline. A lot of you have also heard the phrase, Motive, discipline will take you where motivation can't always be there, right? So sometimes we're motivated, right? We know what our motivation is, but we're not always disciplined enough to be consistent behind what we need to do next, which is shift. So you put the mind and mindset together, <clears throat> your attitude, priming yourself with initiative, those new thoughts, new words, new goals, and then at building out the disciplines behind it, you should shift. You should be shifting your behaviors to the direction that you want to go. You should be shifting your actions. You should be shifting every single part of your life. Those things should change. And so you set that up with your mind, you shift, and then that leads into the execution. It's time to do it. Sometimes we procrastinate with things. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I will do it next week. I'll put it on my calendar for this day. That's good from a milestone perspective, but what is that little piece that you can do today that can help get you to where you need to be tomorrow? So you have to execute. The execution is a critical part. Sometimes we start things and don't finish it. Sometimes we get almost to the end and feel like, okay, I'm almost there, so I know I can do it and we stop. But execution is something that happens daily, and that's why your discipline is so important. So the last piece is today. What are you doing today? It's not about an aggregate of things that's so big that you can't complete it all at once but it's about taking the little pieces that will add up to the pain. When I think about the Mona Lisa, it wasn't one stroke. It was many strokes, many rinses, new colors. So I want you guys to think about your mindset, mentality, your attitude, taking the initiative, new thoughts, new words, the determination and discipline, create that shift, execute today. That makes sense to everybody so far? Yes, yeah. sir. So now we're going to go into the second half of things. We talked about focus and mindset. Those are two tools. And again, my goal is to give you and create the tools that will empower you. Empower you to focus, empower you to have a stronger mindset, but empower you towards your goals. So when we think about going from good to great, let me ask you what that means. So I'm good at this. How do I become great at this? There's actually a range. Good, better, best, greatness. A lot of us are very, very good at what we do. And we think about getting better, we think very tactically. What are the skills I need to build? What is something that I don't know today that I need to know tomorrow for what I'm trying to do? So we think about this very, very tangibly. What I coach you with is the intangibles. What is the mindset? We've talked a little bit today about worthiness. Am I worthy of where I need to go? How do we turn our pain into purpose? And think about, are we healed enough to be where we want to be? So when it comes to going from good to great, it's good, better, best, greatness. When you become better at it, there's the skills that you've learned, and then you become better from a mentality and a mindset perspective. So this is why those tools to empower you from a focus, et cetera, are really help. The next thing is how do you become the best? A lot of you are actually the best in the business or the best in the industry or the best in your field. And so sometimes I get asked, well, if I'm the best at something, aren't I great at it already? So a lot of you know who Steph Curry is. Just gonna get hands on. We all know Steph Curry. So we know Steph. You know Rich Miller. You know Ray Allen. These are arguably the best three-point shooters in NBA history of all time. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yep. Maybe. Now, best three-point shooters. Three-point shooters. <laughs> but if I ask you who the greatest players were, you you differ. It. You say Michael Jordan. You say Kobe Bryant. No. You say LeBron James. You say Bill Russell, maybe greatest champion. Right? Magic, right? So we have a different idea when we talk about the greatest players, even though we just talked about people who are the best at what they do. So when you think about that differentiation, what makes Michael better than Steph? You guys are going to say a whole heck of a lot, but we got plenty of highlights and examples to, to break that down. But if you've seen interviews around Michael Jordan, how he talks about his greatness is that A, he lets other people say it for him, which I like. B, there's an interview he said where he said, you know, I don't think people understand the discipline and determination that I have. Not just work ethic and what I put in to be here, but every day I have to wake up and be Michael Jordan. And people define that themselves as this greatness. And so I make sure that I'm achieving my own level of great, but I understand that people see me in greatness, and I have to to make sure I buy the cover that. Kobe adopted some of those behaviors and principles around him playing, whether or not he was injured sometimes, because of that 
family that got there that one game, that may have been the hardest thing they could have done. Or maybe a great thing that they did together was save that money and bring their family out to see me play. So I'm gonna make sure I play if I can. Now shut up with you guys to say, wherever you are on that journey or in that space, whether you're good at what you do and you're becoming better, whether you've gotten better already and you want to be the best, whether you want to go from best to greatness, I'm going to be that person that helps you get there. The last thing I want to share is something I learned from Natasha Graziano. I met her earlier this year in March. She's a, a powerhouse of a person. I felt so inspired. She's got like this great, great, great incredible energy. She has a book called Be It Before You Become It. So I'm giving credit where it's due. This is Natasha Graziano's words uh, and concept. But when I got the chance to speak to her one-on-one, -on -one, I said, hey, a lot of us know about positive thinking already, positive affirmations already, manifestations, et cetera. Those aren't foreign concepts. We may not practice them every day or as diligently as we should, but what is it that made you truly become where you are from where you are? And she goes, I appreciate that. So what I did was when I was, didn't have the money I wanted and I was sick and I couldn't take care of my son, I started to think about where I want to be. I listened to a bunch of videos from Denzel Washington, very, very inspirational for me at that time. And I was like, people, there was, what I found was a lot of people say, fake a teammate. And she was like, and I didn't want to do that. I understood why they did that, but I didn't want to do that. So I decided to be it before I became it. But then what does that mean? So I said, I'm gonna be that person now. But I'm going to be that person from a mindset perspective, from a behaviors perspective, from a discipline perspective. What does, if five years from now, I see myself as a self-made millionaire, I'm taking care of my son, I'm in a healthy, loving relationship, what does that person do? Well, that, Natasha, she wakes up at five o'clock in the morning and she meditates. She doesn't look at her phone first, she's in her spirit first. What she does is she exercises every single day. She understands what she consumes and is putting in her body physically. She understands what she's consuming by reading and seeing on the news. So I'm trying to make sure that what I put into my spirit and my soul is better. It's the millionaire version of me that I'm going to be today. And then when I thought about I was going to be this today, and what am I becoming? I thought about 10 years in advance of that. And I said, okay, in five years, I'm self-made millionaire, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm in a good loving relationship, I'm taking care of my son, and I'm impacting people. But then 10 years from now, I would have done that. So what is the impact that I would have had on people at this point? What is the impact of the lives I've changed the legacy I'm creating for my children at that point? So I started to journal about me 10 years from now, reflecting back on what the five years ago me version did and the accomplishments that that person had. And that was very, very profound to me because it was a really different way to manifest, a really different way to think positively, but a really different way to embody what you truly want to become. And so a lot of times we don't break down our own barriers because A, we haven't healed or we don't feel like we're worthy or we're not putting the disciplines in place, we're not determined, we're not being consistent. And so I encourage all of you to think about where you are now and where you want to be. Is that better than you were before? Is that achieving a new level of greatness? Is that starting a new endeavor? But whatever that person is, be that person. What disciplines do they have? What things are they executing? What is their mindset? How are they interacting with people? And don't think that's how I'm going to do it when I get there. I'm going to be that today. And then when I become that person, what have you accomplished? And write that down. Now that you are five years past, 10 years into that successful new endeavor, what did you achieve? What was the impact? I had a conversation earlier today with Brandon Heights and we talked about legacy is not just what you leave behind. Legacy is also what you are living in order of that. Right? You're living legacy. So I want all of you to think about each of the four things I shared with you. Number one is focus flow of optimal concentration and confidence to achieve your ultimate success. Your mindset, take the mentality, the initiative towards a new determination that shifts your execution today. Good to great, where are you on your own spectrum? Are you good? Are you better? Are you at your best? Do you want to achieve greatness? How do you get there? And then lastly, be that before you become it. You're going to become great. Start the behaviors today, the execution today, the disciplines today. You're going to be the best at what you do. 
What does the best at what you do look like? What does the best of what you do act like? What is the best of what you do execute like? And what is the impact that the best of you has to bring the best out of other people? So I'm here to connect with each of you in a mindset mastery meeting like this. I think we can have a collective advancement because together we are the tide that rises all the other boats, not just ours. So thank you everybody for your time today. That is a mic drop moment to say the least, and I'm gonna need you to drop that mic if you don't mind. I mean, 